Body of Christ Apostolic Ministries. I'm your host, Bishop Brian Tomlinson, and today we want to talk about turning on the fountain to dream. We got to dream again, ladies and gentlemen. We can't give up, and we can't let the devil destroy our joy. Say, I got a joy fountain. I got a joy fountain. So close your eyes in the presence of the Lord, and let's pray, Lord, activate my joy fountain. I want to be happier, Lord. I want to be so happy that my joy spills off on everybody else. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins and wash us in your blood. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. If you'd like to write us, you can write us to, on our email at jcntv at yahoo.com. Or you can write us, Bishop Brian, P.O. Box 2500. Escondido, California, 92033. I want you to go with me right now to the book of Genesis, chapter 28. Genesis, ch chapter 28. And we're talking about activating the fountain of vindication. Sometimes you've been wronged, and sometimes you will hold that, 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 that brick in front of your fountain, and nothing can flow. So we're going to go into the things that that, that clogged the fountain in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, 19. But first, let's talk about, let's talk about Jacob. Here's a man, he's running from his brother because he stole his birthright. In the book of 28, chapter of Genesis, it says, verse 12. Everybody have that around the world? It says, Genesis, chapter 28, verse 12. Then he dreamed a dream, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and its top reached to the heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give it to you and your descendants. God's going to give you this land. Say, this is my land. My land. Now, you can either be the victim or you can be the victorious one. Every morning when you wake up, activate your fountain of dominion. Say, I have dominion. I'm going to have a good day. And everybody's going to treat me good. Why? Because you're a magnet of goodness. You are a magnet of joy. And when you activate your magnets, your fountains, God will attract, you will begin to attract good things. Don't complain. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna roll away that stone of complaining. Amen? So the Bible says, also your descendants, verse 14. So even your kids are blessed because of your blessed. Amen? Genesis 28, verse 14. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and the north and the south. And in you... And in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. In you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Did you know that, brother? Did you know that people are blessed because you're there? When you come on the scene, good things start happening for people. Glory to God. Amen? Because you got a magnet of eternity flowing in you. Amen? Say, I got a magnet. Of eternity flowing in me. I got a fountain of eternity flowing in me. My friend looking at me like I'm crazy over there, but I'm telling you, you got a magnet of goodness. And then when you come on the scene, everything turns good because your magnet begins to give off a frequency. See, that's the Jesus in you. Hallelujah. Jesus is in you. Say, Jesus is in me. Well, if Jesus is in us, he should begin to do some things through us. Amen? Amen. So we need to activate Jesus in us. Amen? Say, I activate, I activate Jesus, Jesus in, me. in me. I activate, I activate Jesus, Jesus in me. me. Amen. So, so first of all, this is the Abrahamic covenant. God was talking to Abraham. God was talking to Isaac. And God was talking to Jacob. We're in Genesis chapter 28. Now before Jesus came, 
the blessing of Abraham was on us. Amen? And then Moses came and gave us the law. But Jesus came to activate the covenant and the law. So all these things that we have in us, Jesus activates it. He told the woman at the well, he said, if you drink this water, you'll never thirst again. Say, I'm never going to thirst again. Say, I'm never going to thirst again. Now, the word thirst in the Greek means to worry. Don't worry no more because God has given you a fountain to never thirst again. Watch this. <clears throat> He said, if you drink this water, you will never thirst again. Listen, he said to the woman, but in you will be a well springing up into everlasting life. Now, something is wrong, sister, that we don't have this well springing up. So today, we want to show you how to activate this well. Say, activate my well. Now, now I got. I'm an engineer by trade, so I got to take y'all a little bit through this because it's going to help you to understand. Now, a long time ago, the old timers, we call them old timers, when they went looking for gold or diamonds or oil, they drilled for it, and they drilled for days, and then little particles would come up through the drill. How many people ever used a drill? Okay. Well, God is drilling in you right now. Now, now, sooner or later, he's going to hit oil. He's going to hit a diamond. He's going to hit a gold rush. And then you're going to start seeing little particles of that gold, those diamonds, and that oil in you. That's what he was telling the woman at the well. Now, the Greek word for that means giftings. The Bible says your gift will make room for you. Everybody in this room and around the world has a special gift woven in their DNA, okay? If I take a fish, a big fish, and I take him and put him in the dirt, what's gonna happen to the fish? Help me now. But if I take that same fish and throw him in the water, what is he gonna do? No, his genius, his gift comes alive. Because he was born to swim in the water. So once you learn where God has assigned you, brother, you're going to begin to swim just like that fish. Because there's a gift waiting to be activated in you. There's a gift in you. But see, what we do, we spend a lot of time watching television, listening to the radio, gossiping, slandering one another. We don't spend time asking God to activate the gift in us. Because everybody, look at Einstein. What did Einstein create? Help me now. What did Einstein create? What did Thomas Edison create? Electricity. Now, when he first came out and said, ladies and gentlemen, remember it was dark, everybody was using candles, right? Say candles. Candles. Candle. In fact, you are even a candle. So I hope I light your candle today. So Thomas Edison came and said, brothers and sisters of the world, I invented this machine called electricity. Now, what did the people think? They thought he was crazy, right? Why? Because they never saw electricity. They never experienced it. They didn't know the formula, brother. They didn't know how to create electricity. So sometimes when you don't know how to create something, it becomes foreign to you. So my job is to keep drilling in you until your fountain activates. Say, activate my fountain. This is what Jesus is all about. Now, you came to Jesus Christ because he activated your fountain called salvation. How many people know about salvation in this room around the world? If you know about salvation, I want you to email me to jcntv at yahoo.com. Tell me your salvation experience. So that's one of the fountains called salvation. You know that Jesus died on the cross for your sin. Amen? How many people know that? Come on, around the world, tell me that you know about Jesus dying on the cross for your sin, right? So... That fountain got activated, listen, when you accepted 
Jesus Christ. So God gave Jacob this dream so he could activate his imagination. He could activate his thoughts. Because sometimes we have brain fog. Say, Lord, take away the brain fog. Come on, help me now. Lord, take away the brain fog. Some people call it old timers. There ain't no such thing as old timers. That's a, there's something blocking you from thinking about the Lord. But when you start praising the Lord, when you start magnifying the Lord, when you start asking God to forgive you of your sins, when you start asking God to fill you with the Holy Spirit, what happens, something gets activated in you. And I know I'm saved because I'm not the man I used to be. Somebody changed me and it wasn't me. It was the Holy Spirit activating my fountain. Amen. amen. Come on. Oh, sister said amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Was I that bad? Praise God. <laughs> amen. I was a dirty, rotten sinner. How many people can testify that I was a dirty, rotten sinner? Now, I ain't talking about me. I'm talking about you. Yeah. Right? Oh, because one guy looked at me. Yeah, I knew who you was. Yeah, you see? No. We all was born in sin, ladies and gentlemen. But Jesus activated our mercy fountain, our forgiveness fountain. He took away the fountain of shame. I had a lot of shame in my life. Have you ever had any shame in your life, brother? Okay, I just want to know. You know, if we was in the right place, all right? He, he took away fear. A mistake. Fear of making a mistake again. He took that, he rolled that away. Amen? That, 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 that's that big brick that kept holding you down so you felt you couldn't prosper, you couldn't grow. But I declare to you today that you're going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Psalms chapter 1. Amen? And you will bring forth fruit in due season. Hallelujah. Say it again. I am a tree. I am a tree. Planted. Planted. By the rivers of water. And my I will bring forth fruit. And my fruit will not wither. And whatever I do will prosper. Why? Because I'm planted by the rivers of water. Glory to God. And that's what God was doing inside of Jacob in this dream. Listen, listen to the rest of this. Verse 15. Genesis 20, 15. Behold, I am with you. Say, behold, I am with you. Ladies and gentlemen, God is with you. But you have to activate that fountain every day. You have to wake up in the morning and say, activate fountain of the Holy Spirit. Good morning. God is with me. See, you have to activate the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's why before you go to bed, say, Lord, if I grieved you, quenched you, resisted you, forgive me. I want you to activate your spirit that I would have a sweet sleep. And then you'll sleep good all through the night. Why? The Holy Spirit is watching over you. But sometimes I've noticed if I don't pray, I have a bad dream. Because I didn't activate the Holy Spirit. Because God neither, neither slumbers nor sleeps, praise God. He said, I am going to give my beloved sweet sleep. You don't need to take no pills to go to sleep. You can sleep like a baby because you are in the arms of Jesus. Say, I'm in the arms of Jesus. Another thing that chokes the, the pipe is sickness and weakness. Worrying about your sicknesses and weaknesses. Another thing is doubt. Or drought. When you doubt God, it's because you're not spending enough time with God. If you sit out there all day on the balcony and smoke cigarettes and don't read your Bible, then you're going to be in drought. You're going to feel like a desert. You won't feel like Psalms 1 that says, I'm like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And I'm going to bring forth fruit in due season. My leaf shall not wither, and whether I, whatever I do, I'm going to prosper. You will not feel like that because you haven't stirred or activated your fountain. Many people read the Bible, but they don't mix it with faith. They don't mix it with the fountain of the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians 12 says, the 
gift of faith. Everybody in this room, when you were born, were given the measure of faith. And what is faith? Faith is trusting God. But you have to activate it. If you don't activate it every day, okay, give you a prime example. If all of us was farmers, and every morning I walked by your house, and I said, hey, what's up, Brother Murphy? Hey, Sister Gonzalez. Hey, Brother Timothy. Boy, your garden is sure looking good. Now, I came past the next day, and I said, okay, I don't want you to tend your garden for 30 days. I, will, I don't even want you to water your garden. What's going to happen? Sister, help us now. Tell us what you say. It's going to what? Die. Why is it going to die? Because you're not activating. You know what? You're not activating. Uh-huh. Come on. You have to activate the water. You know they got this sprinkler system. Every so often the sprinkler come on. The water just start floating, right? That's how Jesus is. <laughs> if you don't put Jesus on a timer, he ain't going to come out. <laughs> you feel me? So you got to put Jesus on a timer like a water, like a, like a sprinkler. Okay, Jesus, every three hours I'm going to meet with you. If it's nothing but one minute, and I'm going to pray, and I'm going to be thankful. Thank I'm just going to be thankful. How we doing, Sammy? We okay over there? So, so. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go. He's going to keep you. You are not alone. Amen. Say, I'm not alone. Amen. Okay. And will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. So God is speaking to you to do something through you. You could be on your deathbed. I'm going to go over and talk about a man that was on his deathbed named Lazarus. He died. And everybody was crying and saying, hey, man, Jesus, what happened to you? We was waiting for you to heal Lazarus, but God let him die. Now, think about that, ladies and gentlemen. If God, you felt God made your loved one die, and then God comes four days later, Samuel. Everybody's crying. Everybody's feeling bad. But ladies and gentlemen, I come to announce and to activate in you that Jesus is Lord over death. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be what? Present with the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Say, I'm, activate that thought. Say, I'm present, I'm present with the Lord. Lord. Say, I'm present, I am present with, the with the Lord. God is watching you from heaven. So when you die, God is going to bring you into heaven. Amen. There's a heaven. Amen. Just like there's an earth, there's a heaven. A lot of people don't know that when they die, they're going to go to hell or heaven. My question to you is where are you going when you die? See, it doesn't matter if you die if you got Jesus. Because if you die and you have Jesus, you're going in the presence of the Lord. Right? So you don't have to be afraid of death. I used to be afraid of death. And when God put me in the, in the pit, I fasted 40 days and God took me to heaven and showed me how beautiful heaven was. There's going to be no more weeping, no more crying. There's going to be no sickness in heaven. And we're going to be standing in the presence of God all day and all night. There'll be no darkness there. And we won't have to lock, I heard the pastor say this morning, we don't have to lock the gates. You know how everybody's afraid you can't leave your door open? Well, in heaven, you can leave your door open. There ain't no thieves up there. Can I get an amen? There ain't no liars in heaven. Nobody can tell a lie. Could you imagine everybody telling the truth? There's a real place called heaven where everybody tells the truth. Say that. Everybody tells the truth. They, they operate on the fountain of eternity. The fountain of eternity is everybody tells the truth. Everybody's healthy. There's no sickness. There's no, there's no, there's no depression in heaven. Oh, glory to God. If you support our ministry, we want to send you this bottle that's going to clean your liver. And when you clean your liver, it cleans the whole body. And you can write us.
Bishop Bryan, um, P.O. Box 2500, Escondido, California, 92033. It's like cleansing your life with the blood of Jesus. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, I want you to bow your head in the presence of the Lord and let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I have heard the word and I ask you to forgive me for my sin. And I ask you to activate my salvation fountain. And Lord, I ask you to roll away every stone. Oh, I know I'm dead in my sins, but I believe that Jesus Christ died for me and that he buried my sins and he rose from the dead with the keys of the kingdom to give me those keys. And Lord, I accept those keys and I activate those keys, the keys of the Holy Spirit. Now, Holy Spirit, begin to seal me where I am weak. Begin to wash me where I am sinful. Begin to, begin to strengthen me with thy word, O oh God, where I am weak. And make me whiter than snow in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Go with me if you can to www.godmanarmy.com. You can watch all the videos and be inspired all day in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.